ago, I won the World Series of Poker main event. Chris Moneymaker is atop the poker world. I realized every poker player's dream. Tonight, nine players get the chance to do what I did 10 years ago. Win the main event. The great part about having the chip lead is I'm able to go in there and have a variety of styles to play. I have more room for trial and error. So I'm the short stack. What's going to happen most likely is that within the first orbit or two, I'm going to be getting all in. Now, if I double up, I can start putting some chips together. I think I have as good a chance as anybody. I'm happy to be the underdog and have people feel like I am the amateur. I personally have confidence in my own abilities. Millions are at stake with this bracelet for the champion. The World Series of Poker main event final table. Someone else's dream gets dealt tonight. Moving in for the kill. And there it is. Helmut wins the championship. Moneymaker puts his name amongst the greatest players in the game. World Series of Poker Main Event Final Table Telecast presented by Wild Turkey. One of the richest first place prizes in poker history on the line. Over $8.3 million. It's an atmosphere unlike any other in the game. Mark Etienne McLaughlin's crowd out in full force, but it has competition. Fans and opponents alike will be focused on 36-year-old chip leader J.C. Tran, talented and stacked. Former online star turned Columbia University student David Benefield has his work cut out for him. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad covering our 11th main event final table. Kara Scott will report from the floor. This is the biggest stage in poker. There is no tomorrow like they say for an NBA Game 7. Win or go home. Tonight we go from November 9 to one world champion. And like this crowd, I am stoked. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for this? It's hard not to be with 15 big boys. It's fun either way. What's that? It's fun either way. Yeah, for sure. Let's go around the table and meet this year's November 9. Sylvain Lancely from Toulon, France. Michiel Brumelage from Amsterdam, Holland. Mark Newhouse, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Ryan Reese, Waterford, Michigan. Amir Le Havoc, Western Florida. Mark Etienne McLaughlin, Brossard, Quebec. JC Tran, Sacramento, California. David Benefield, Fort Worth, Texas. Jay Farber from Santa Barbara, California. This is going to be a fun one. Three chips in play right now 25K, 100K, and the base chip worth a quarter million each. Blinds right now at 200, 400,000, a 50K Addy. Mark Etienne McLaughlin will put some chips to work with Pocket Kings, a raise to 850000 J.C. Tran, one of four players at this table with a business degree, along with Ryan Reese, Jay Farber, and Sylvain Lee, who has a master's in business. Of course, Lee has no business wearing that scarf. <laughs> one of these nine will take Greg Merson's place as world champion and collect more than $8.3 million tonight. Folded to the small blind. Dutch pro, Mikiel Bremelhaus. New father. Yes, he is. With 10-4, he folds in the big blind. Mark Newhouse with Queens. 17 big blinds left. All in. All in. Go. Yeah. They're Go. all in the middle, and of course, a snap call from McLaughlin. Newhouse early on just wanted a big pocket pair to double up on, and then this happens. Well, Newhouse waited more than 100 days to get it all in as a short stack with pocket Queens. That should have been worth the wait, but he runs smack into pocket Kings. Mark oh, Etienne me. McLaughlin's rail. McLaughlin consulting with his courtiers. And here is the flop. And oh, a queen! What a flop for Newhouse. What a flop for McLaughlin. And it turns out to be worth the wait for pocket queens. Mark Etienne McLaughlin was in position for the knockout and to take the chip lead, but now just looking for a miracle. 
Newhouse about to double up the 37 big blinds. McLaughlin can only bust them with a River King. And it's a five on the river. Newhouse loved to see the Queens until McLaughlin turned over the Kings. But a tournament saving flop keeps the cash game grinder in the game. Mark Newhouse has seen a lot of ups and downs in his poker life. And the 28-year-old has been up, down, and up throughout this main event. Nearly a quarter of McLaughlin's stack goes to Newhouse, dropping the Canadian to fifth place. Not the way this tattoo artist drew up his game plan. Here's a look at the wild turkey payouts. As we mentioned, over $8.3 million for first. A big difference compared to the ninth place payout of over $733,000, which all have received. So whoever finishes ninth tonight, it's a double whammy. You're the first to be knocked out, and you get no more money for your efforts. So Mark Etienne McLaughlin going right back to work with King 9, a raise to 850. David Benefield with pocket 10s. He originally went to TCU and dropped out of college after three days. Boy, I was at Maryland for five and a half years before I realized I didn't like it. <laughs> and then David eventually re-enrolled at TCU, dropped out again, and now several years later, he's at Columbia as an East Asian Studies major. David said it was likely he was going to get it all in early, but here just a re-raise to 2 million. A lot of players shoved there. Folded to Jay Farber. He gives it up. Savant Luzli, the Frenchman, in the small blind with four tray of clubs. He folds. Nikhil Bremelhaus now in the big blind with two black aces. Bremelhaus says he cashed at 60% of live tournaments he played in 2012. That's like David Ortiz numbers at the World Series of Baseball. <laughs> no kidding. Bremelhaus with just over 10 million. All in. And as expected, he'll shove. So back to McLaughlin, the original raiser with King-9. Who's now thinking King-9 was a good idea at the time. Not so much anymore. Now to Benefield with the pocket 10s. If Benefield gives this up, he's left with 18 big blinds. He's staring at a four bet. So at best, he's probably racing for his tournament life. But hey, maybe he's willing to gamble. Jeremy covered? I have you covered, and I just had a baby. <laughs> There's McKeel's girlfriend, Ann Craft, who delivered the couple's first child about seven weeks ago. Baby's in town, too. And there's David Benefield's girlfriend, Lisa Paulson. The girlfriend seems so blue. Benefield gives up the pocket tens. What a fold, Norman. That's a good fold. So David Benefield will certainly live for another day. Big hands being dealt early on at this final table. Brimmelhouse had the power of the aces. But despite the pocket pair of his own, Benefield read the Dutch pro as super strong. Ah, he's a smart kid with a dream. <laughs> so Bremelhaus picks up a chunk of Benefield's chips, but the story definitely was Benefield's fold, likely saving his main event tournament life. The 2013 World Series of Poker presented by Wild Turkey, bottled but never tamed. Please drink responsibly. And in part by WSOP, Full House Pro on Xbox 360. Download Poker's Most Authentic Experience free on Xbox Live Arcade today. We're 24 hours away from the big day. It's coming. I need some rest. Yeah, having fun with all my friends here playing dodgeball. <laughs> We previously saw McLaughlin playing what he called funky dodgeball in Canada. Well, he took his act on the road to Vegas just before this final table. Mark Etienne staying active with King Jack. He just called Amir Lehavut's raise with ace king. They see a flop of four, six king, both the top pair. Lehavut has top kicker. Lehavut won a bracelet in 2011. He had Israel's anthem played to honor his country of birth and to protest the unavailability of online poker in the U.S. Amir, the former high-tech engineer turned poker website creator turned World Series bracelet winner, second in chips at this final table with a bet of a million two fifty. McLaughlin, one of the great main event performers of the poker boom era. Three top 100 finishes in the last five years, all in fields of 6,000 plus. Now sitting here amongst the final nine, and now with top pair and a weaker kicker, he'll come along. Turn card now is a jack, and McLaughlin turns kings up to grab the advantage from Amir. Leavitt was a junior chess champion in Texas after his family moved there. I would have figured if you played chess in Texas, you just got beat up all the time. 
Amir checks. Mark Etienne's rail seems to include some let's make a deal cast tops. <laughs> I don't know if it's good to have a donkey in your corner. <laughs> so Mark Etienne McLaughlin with the best of it here on the turn. Kings up at a bet of two and a half million. By the way, I'll bet you nobody in chess ever says, well, that's chess. <laughs> and nobody ever probably says, ship it, or that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> with top pair, top kicker, Leavitt coming along. Yeah, if I'm Leavitt, top pair, top kicker, certainly looks pretty good to me. River card now is another King McLaughlin. Rivers Kings full. Leavitt is second best with trip kings and top kicker, and he checks again. That's an ugly card oh, for wow. Ace King. Oh, and it's never a good sign when your opponent moves his whole cards out of the way <laughs> to give him enough room to put a lot of chips into the pot. It looks to be a two-handed bet coming. No, he just uses the right one, but it's 7.2 million, a healthy bet from McLaughlin. Trip Kings and Amir can't like it as much now. <laughs> now can he get away? He does make the call, and he sees Kings full from McLaughlin. Big hand for Mark Etienne. Unlucky hand for Amir. McLaughlin took the early bad beat from Newhouse and now bounces back and takes over second place from Lehavut. Amir falls to fifth after that brutal turn in River. <laughs> Fellow Canadian, good friend in 2010, made event champ Jonathan Duhamel likes what he sees from his buddy McLaughlin. Well, Mark Etienne McLaughlin, one of the more well-rounded players. He plays a lot of poker, but he has business interests on the side, or is it the other way around, Norman? Well, he's got stock holdings, real estate. He's in the sourcing business. And, of course, Mark Etienne is a tattoo artist with no tattoos himself. Still nine-handed at this final table. Since Newhouse's double-up thing's not going his way, he's the short stack. And with pocket nines, he's all in. 23-year-old Ryan Reese, now the youngest here with Ace King. Reese the Beast has said he's the best player at this final table, and he expects to win it all. Reese cutting out some chips for the call. So Newhouse at risk on the button, lay a butt. Five deuce into the muck. McLaughlin and Tran both fold, so Newhouse at risk again, this time in better shape, though. Newhouse, friends with chip leader J.C. Tran. They both play high stakes, live and hold them in Los Angeles. Ryan Reese trying to end Mark Newhouse's main event. And now the flop and a king for Ryan Reese. Newhouse now looking at being the first victim at this final table again. Newhouse now could be staring at his last board of this 2013 main event. Turn card another seven. Reese a 19 to one favorite now. Mark Newhouse a card away from ninth place. Newhouse has got to have a nine on the river. The river card, the six of diamonds, and Mark Newhouse, who had a wild day seven ride from chip leader to feeling lucky to make this final table, is out in ninth. He shoved twice with a pocket pair, got lucky the first time and unlucky the second time. Ryan Reese in second place now with nearly 38 million chips. The beastie boys and girls are thrilled, but a different story for Mark Newhouse's crew. Newhouse won a WPT title in 2006, now a main event final table appearance. I know you don't keep up with these things, Lon, but now it's the November 8th. <laughs> David Benefield, the short stack coming in. Well, he is guaranteed eighth place money at least right now. And I hope Newhouse self-parked because he didn't make any more money tonight, so he doesn't want to be tipping a valet. <laughs> a minor bubble bursted with Newhouse's exit. The eight remaining players now see dramatic pay bumps with each knockout. Hold it around to McLaughlin. He gives it up to the button. J.C. Tran, the chip leader right now with a six and a raise to a million one. David Benefield now in the small blind. King do suited. Mullen. And he re-raises all in for eight and a half million. Farber, though, picks up Ace King. Well, Benefield probably figured Tran was raising light on the button. He moved all in with 17 big blinds left, but unluckily, the big blind with Ace King. Yeah, David didn't want to be pushed around by the big stack, but he's about to be blindsided by the amateur. Call. Farber makes the call with Ace King. Benefield knows that's bad news. Farber's been pretty tight. Tran quickly folds. You see Benefield shaking his head at his crew, saying, I'm in bad shape. Well, I thought Benefield might have been a little more patient, but I certainly can see him pushing in that spot. 
So Farber, the solid amateur, picks up a big hand and has Benefield dominated. 5-10 Queen, no immediate help for Benefield. Farber with the Broadway draw. Jack, up. will you take the Jack of Spades? I think I'm gonna need, think I'm gonna need a little help here. Will you take the Jack of Spades? Oh yeah. All right. We'll take the Jack of Spades, he asks. David's girlfriend looks more worried than he. Turn card now. You want the Jack of Spades, you got it! <laughs> <laughs> the VIP host knows how to take care of people. As promised, Farber delivers Benefield a Jack of Spades. A flush draw for Benefield. For Benefield, any spade wins the whole pot. A red ace and they'll chop the pot. Otherwise, he is gone. The river card, the deuce of diamonds. David Benefield comes up short but did manage to move up a notch on the pay scale. Eighth place, worth nearly $945,000. And trust me, there is a sigh of relief around the table that this guy's going out. Take it down. David Benefield, an extraordinary poker talent. Very well respected among his fellow poker players, has rediscovered his passion for poker, but knows job one is completing his degree. And a nice notch in the belt for Farber. Jay Farber's chipping up. Evgeny Tymoshenko in David's corner knows that good strategies can go south when the cards don't cooperate. And how about Jay Farber jumping into second place? No time to sit back at this final table. Newhouse had hope early on, but got busted in ninth place. Benefield got a sweat, but he's gone in eighth. Seven players now left at this championship table. Uh, we're here one day before the final table, hanging out with my family and friends, having a good time. Everybody's happy. Except Leo, he's tired. <laughs> well, Amir Leo, but just before the final table, Amir, one of three players here with a child. Nikhil Bremerhaus and his girlfriend had a baby recently. JC Tran has a young son and a girl on the way. Ace King again for Ryan Reese. 23-year-old with a raise to a million one. Lehavut, 5-4 of spades. The oldest player here at 38, Reese the youngest at 23. This is the second time in main event history that all the players at the final table are under the age of 40. It also happened in 2010, the year Jonathan Duhamel won. And the former engineer putting chips together with 5-4 suited. And from the cutoff position, a re-raise to two and a half million. McLaughlin on the button, ace 10. Mark Etienne and Jonathan Duhamel roomed here three straight summers in a group house during the World Series, including the year Duhamel won it all. In fact, they also roomed together when Mark Etienne finished 30th in 2009 and 86th in 2011. And Mark Etienne putting chips together himself, sending a daunting message with a four bet to 4750 And Jay Farber in the big blind with two nines. And two nines are best, Lon, but it's been four bet. And if I'm Jay Farber, I've got to figure pocket nines are behind someone. So tempting for Farber, but he does opt not to get involved. So back to Reese with Ace King. Now let's see how Reese, who was playing 1-2 No Limit Hold'em a year or so ago in Lansing, Michigan, processes all of this. Reese with the better hand. Yeah. I was doing exactly what he did. Farber getting a second so opinion on his fold. Reese, Reese is and Reese insane. putting chips together, a five bet to 11 million, 100,000. <laughs> and Leia Butt with 5-4 quickly folds, now McLaughlin with ace-10. Yeah, a five bet's gonna make ace-10 feel like seven deuce. If I'm McLaughlin, I try to make a deal right here with Reese, you know, give me a million chips back and I'll <laughs> give you the pot. You can't do that in a tournament, cash yes. And McLaughlin gives it up, and what a boost to the stack of Ryan Reese adding over eight million without a flop. Reese is a beast, and he is the chip leader. Before play began, we asked Ryan what he thought of his image at the table. I think that most players probably think I'm really aggressive and kind of crazy because I'm young and just got out of college and have big hair or whatever they think. But um, in all reality, I'm pretty, I'm very like composed and pretty tight. I pick my spots very well, and most people probably would not guess that. 
I wouldn't have guessed he worked as a parking booth attendant at Michigan State and as a cashier at Kmart. He seems more like a Ross dress for less type of guy. <laughs> Action underway, folded to Dutch pro McKeel Bermelhouse in the small blind with pocket nines. He was playing in a small tournament in the Netherlands last month. His girlfriend came along during dinner break. She felt contractions. They left. Two hours later, they had a baby boy. But, of course, he was blinded off from the tournament and did not cash. A raise to a million and a half in the big blind. Reese has graduated from ace king to pocket aces. Well, he's picking another nice spot here, I think. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Reese with the re-raise to 3.2 million. 3.2. Bremel House, the first player from the Netherlands to make the main event final table. Our good friend Marcel Luce nearly did it. 14th in the 2003 main event. 10th in 2004. All in. Call. All in. Bremel House, here's the snap call signaling danger. We're blind on blind. Just rotten luck for Bremel House. And his girlfriend cannot believe he's run into pocket aces. Reese's ace king took out Mark Newhouse's pocket Nine nines. Now his ace ace poised to take out Bremelhouse's pocket nines. McKeel at risk. Here's the flop. 4-7 king. Reese likes that. A pretty bleak flop for McKeel. McKeel Bremelhouse can only sit and hope for a minor miracle. The young chip leader looking for another knockout. I just ran. The turn card now is not a nine. And Ryan Reese looking to score his second knockout in the early going. Rimmel House is gonna need a nine. One time, man. This is my this is my one time. I haven't used it yet. Seven of hearts, no one time for Brimmel House. Ryan Reese does it again. Yeah, that was a coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A seventh place start leads to a seventh place finish for new daddy McKeel Brimmelhouse. Brimmelhouse didn't get much of a chance to do much at this final table. Pile drived out of here by Reese the Beast. Ryan Reese with a nice lead after that hand. Bremelhouse became the first player from the Netherlands to make the final table, but won't become its first champion. His exit leaves us six-handed. Our World Series of Poker main event final table telecast presented by Wild Turkey started nine-handed. Now just six remain, everyone chasing the top prize of $8.3 million. With the blinds up to three and 600,000, Jay Farber opened for 1.3 million with ace queen suited. In the small blind, Amir Lehovut holds King Jack. Lehovut knows Farber usually plays only premium hands. Does he really want to play King Jack against him out of position? He does. A re-raise from Lehovut to 3.1 million. Back to Farber now. Well, maybe Amir actually doesn't want to play Jay out of position. He just wants to pick up the pot right here. Farber calls himself an independent VIP host. He also says he's just a glorified personal concierge. Either way, Jay says he doesn't get too many unhappy customers. Jay will become a customer with the call of a million eight more. Leavitt has already guaranteed himself his biggest ever poker score, but he's looking for the big bucks and his second bracelet. The flop four, deuce 10, misses Leavitt. Ace queen still best for Farber. Leavitt, methodical, meticulous, measured. When he goes to 7-Eleven, he knows exactly what flavor Slurpee he's going to get by the time it's his turn to order. <laughs> he will continue to show strength, hoping Farber goes away. A bet of 2.3 million. But Leavitt sees Farber putting chips together, and there is a call. Leavitt bet with Squadoosh. Farber called with Squadoosh. It's a den of Squadoosh grifters. <laughs> Nine of diamonds on the turn. Farber's ace high is ahead, plus he added a flush draw. Leavitt with a gut shot. Farber's call on the flop would have scared the bejeebers out of me if I were Leavitt. And now, Leavitt's bet here on the turn would scare the bejeebers out of me if I were Farber. <laughs> You've got to have a, a lot of bejeebers in storage to continue with this hand. That is four million from Amir Leavitt. Well, picking up the nut flush draw is big for Farber. Even if he were up against, say, ace-10, he'd be getting the right price to call here. Farber does make the call. Almost 20 million in the pot. The river card. Ace of hearts. Farber pairs up with the ace. A check from Leavitt. Amir gives up on it. It's Farber's pot if he checks. 
Farber checks back and will pick up another pot, taking about nine and a half million of Leavutz chips. Jay Farber was sticky on that one and it paid off. Good read on the flop and turn. Jay Farber approaching 50 million chips. He started this final table in fourth position, now up to second. Amir Lehavut having troubles at this championship table. Call show. Call show. Probably, I thought about shoving or like ripping 10 million back on the turn. Let's take a closer look at the Vegas VIP host. He has a degree from Santa Barbara City College, took some classes at UCSB but didn't finish. Farber, an amateur poker player who certainly knows what he's doing. He used to work as a bouncer where he would check IDs and break up fights. Now as a host, he says, I make sure everyone has fun. Back to action. Mark Etienne McLaughlin in the big blind. And his supporters chanting Larry Walker, hoping Mark Etienne gets a walk in the big blind. But Walker was Canadian born, a longtime Montreal Expo. He was a home run hitter, so he got a lot of walks in his career. Well, it's up to Leia Butt whether Mark Etienne gets the walk, and he Larry does. Walker! And McLaughlin will celebrate with his rail. <laughs> That's how you do it. Even Yasiel Pui doesn't celebrate walks that way. <laughs> I have never seen that before. Oh, he had Ace King suited. The joy of the walk celebrating with the rail, the agony of the walk seeing Ace King suited. Are you more excited you got a walk now? <laughs> Leading the cheers for McLaughlin, his girlfriend, Laurence Grandin. She once finished third in a World Series event. Action on Sylvain Luzley. You want to get cards? Take off the scarf. <laughs> Lose Lee under the gun, 8-10. Of course. Uh, got no cards to play. Ryan Reese folds over to Lehavut. Tough sledding for Amir. He gives up, as does McLaughlin. Now, J.C. Tran. The two-time bracelet winner has been quiet here. With ace-queen, a raise to a million four. Farber with pocket sixes. Farber has a bevy of poker minds on his rail. Ben Lamb, Sean Deeb, Jesse Sylvia, Dan Fleischman, Dan Bilzerian. Farber second in chips, over 60 million right now. And he's gonna put some heat back on Tran, a re-raise to 3.1 million. This is the biggest hand we've seen JC Tran have tonight. And he's now a distant third in chips to Reese and Farber. This is blind versus blind. Ran down to 21 million. Please. And he's going to repop it to 6.4 million. Does Jay Farber want to go any further with a small pocket pair? Well, he knows JC has been pretty quiet. Perhaps this activity from Tran would indicate that Tran has a strong hand. 10 million even. <laughs> but Farber is going to barge ahead with a re-raise to 10 million. Wow, the, the Jay Farber we've seen till now never with five bet with pocket sixes. If I'm JC Tran, I've got to figure Jay for a much bigger hand. And the thing is, Ace Queen doesn't play well to a five bet. It's been a very quiet cheering section for those in JC Tran t-shirts. JC be getting four and a half to one here with Ace Queen out of position. But he gives up the hand. Farber muscles up and Tran withers. It has been quite a night to remember for Jay Farber to this point. And he's collected a chip stack to make it even more special with the power to push around one of the game's best. Got it. Got it. Probably the worst hand. Leaving JC Tran to wonder if he made the right fold. I'm just afraid I'm folding to the same hand. Today we're going to get out there and play some three on three and we're actually on the official NBA court of the Sacramento Kings. Kind of show you guys the other side of me, away from the poker table. And you know my passion is basketball and I get to watch in this arena and now I get to play on it. So that's a pretty amazing experience. I made a half court shot in here once. <laughs> Try it again. with my brother all my life. Up till today, he still can't guard me. So let's just see how it's gonna be today. You know, there's gonna be some smack talking, and but it's all it's all fun, and uh, hopefully I can go out there and put up a good game and talk some smack. Oh yeah! Get that on tape! Get it, what, what, what? Growing up in Sacramento, I've always been a Kings fan. The last couple years, you know, the Kings don't know where they're at as far as where the future's gonna be. You know, we had a lot of young talent coming in, unsure of where they're gonna end up. That was some challenges that, uh, you know, didn't allow the team to perform so well. 
but I, I still think we have a lot of young talent that in the future we're going to be a playoff team again. Now they know that they're in Sacramento for good and you know this is where they their the career is going to be and the team is going to be different and uh, I think they're going to play with a lot more heart this year. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. Hey, come here. You need a hug. Come here. You need a hug. Come here. Give a hug. I'm looking forward to this uh, new season coming up with the uh, you know new organization and uh, you know some new players and uh, I think we're gonna do well this year. Game time. Lunch. Lunch. Free lunch. You know I want to say thank you to Mayor Johnson, Kevin Johnson, and uh, all the other Kings owners that saved the, saved the team and. Uh, and you know, kept the team here in Sacramento and uh, allow myself and my family and you know, my son and one day my daughter to come watch some games and uh, you know, save a, a major sports team in, uh, in Sacramento. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Well, the fortunes of the Kings may have changed for the better. Not so for their number one fan, J.C. Tran, the former chip leader in third place now. $40 million plus behind Reese and Farber. McLaughlin on the button, ace king of hearts, now the short stack. McLaughlin's a Montreal Canadiens fan. I don't think they're thinking about leaving town anytime soon. Never. A raise to 1.6 million. Tran in the small blind with a seven off. Well, you know, it feels like Mark Etienne's been on a power play all night. He's been very active. He won JC1 Poker Stars W Coupe Online title in 2007. $670,000 for his prize. During breaks, he would shoot free throws in his driveway basket to keep his blood flowing. Tran continuing this final table pattern with a weak hand, raising into ace king. He made it 3.4 million. I'm all in. And all in from McLaughlin. That should get JC's blood flowing. Can you bring it in? That's over 8.8 million from McLaughlin. JC's wife, Heather, due to give birth in just about a week, but she's here. Trent hasn't seen much to play tonight. His three bet made sense, but I can't see him continuing with a raggedy ace. But he does indeed take a shot. And McLaughlin has the best of it all in. Boy, JC decides he can't get pushed around anymore. He called 5.4 million there. McLaughlin ready to double up. JC may be showing some of his frustration. I want to suck out one time. We're not used to seeing this. JC Tran coming a little unhinged. And if he does suck out one time, he will knock out Mark Etienne McLaughlin. It's one time in this tournament in all this situation, I want to suck out. All right, here's the flop. McLaughlin looking to hang on. Trey, Jack, Trey. JC likes the paired board. Yeah, chance now they'll chop the pot. Mark Etienne still in great shape to double up. Jonathan Duhamel looking closely on. Turned card, six of clubs, no help for Tran. McLaughlin, one card from a much needed double up. Well, with a river jack or six, they would chop the pot. Only a seven knocks out Mark Etienne McLaughlin. River card, the tray of diamonds, and McLaughlin doubles to 19 million. JC Tran still stuck in a rut. And that sea of insanity, I'm surprised Mark Etienne found the right person to kiss. 38% of his stack moves to the right, and the two big stacks to start this final table are now the two short stacks, Tran and Lehavut. Well, the most active player, Mark Etienne McLaughlin, has chips to work with again, trying to bring the title back to Canada for the second time in four years. During the break, Mark Etienne McLaughlin picked up more chips with 9-7 of spades. He flopped a flush against Sylvain Loosley's middle pair. After Loosley's poorly timed three bet, McLaughlin put Loosley all in, ending matters quickly. McLaughlin increases stack by over 11 million chips. And now McLaughlin in the big blind. And his rail calling for another Larry Walker special. I can't believe we're in the midst of a Larry Walker revival. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amir, what do you do? 8-7 off. Larry 
He gives it up, and here we go again with the leap. I wish he could actually win the main event on a walk. What a celebration that would be. <laughs> Mark Etienne McLaughlin and his rail certainly bringing a lot of life to the theater. Time now for our Wild Turkey Never Tame moment. McLaughlin earns that for this unique take on receiving a walk in the big blind. Norman, is this something we can see you adapting into your game? No, I'm not in good enough shape, Lon. You, you gotta have young man's legs to do this. I've been sitting on a couch since 1984. <laughs> <laughs> McLaughlin back into third place where he started this final table. Chip added into play. Oversized red chip is worth a half a million. A stack of them worth 10 million. Lehavat under the gun. Folds 10 for McLaughlin now with pocket kings. He'd love to draw as a youngster. At 16, he entered a major painting contest in Montreal and finished second. And I believe he took a bad beat in that one. Folded to Jay Farber with pocket aces. These are the second and third biggest stacks here, aces versus kings. We can have almost 80 million chips in the middle pre-flop, and Mark Etienne would be staring at a brutal end to his main event. Farber on the button, the second biggest stack at the table. And the expected re-raise to 3.8 million. Loosely folds his small blind. Reese the big, so back to McLaughlin with Kings. Yeah, final table shouldn't be decided like this. Kings shouldn't run into aces, Lon. If it were up to me, this would be an automatic misdeal. <laughs> Mark Etienne started the hand with nearly 50 big blinds. It's hard to believe all his chips are going to be in the middle and hopelessly behind in a few moments. This is Texas Hold'em ugliness at its worst. And there, the four bet to 8.7 million. You hear the crowd. With every raise, the tension gets thicker. And no insta-all in five bet from Farber. He looks like he wants to bleed McLaughlin a bit more to set the hook. Who will send the biggest message now? 19.4 million from Farber. All in. All in. Yep, and there you go. The train wreck that so often happens at a final table. McLaughlin feels the blunt of the blow, and it hurts. And now Mark Etienne McLaughlin, who had just rediscovered his footing in danger of a sudden exit. And Farber on the verge of a monster chip stack. One time. One time. One time. One time. One time. Mark Etienne using his one time. Under my rules, he wouldn't need it since the hands would be dead and we'd be moving on. The flop, 8-7, deuce, nothing there for Mark Etienne. Yeah, no king, no chance for runner-runner. McLaughlin in deep trouble. Jack of diamonds on the turn. The French Canadian saw red paint, but the thrill was short-lived. A king and a king only saves Mark Etienne McLaughlin. The river, another jack ends it. Jay Farber with the huge knockout. Sending Mark Etienne McLaughlin into the night in sixth place. For McLaughlin, nothing to be ashamed of. No more entertaining walks and no French Canadian reprise to Jonathan Duhamel's 2010 title. And this impressive main event run for McLaughlin, his best ever, earns him over 1.6 million. Boy, that hand lit up this Penn and Teller theater. Amateur Jay Farber has seized the chip lead at this championship table. Let's send it down to Kara Scott with Mark Etienne McLaughlin. Talk to me about having to run kings into aces in the biggest moment of your poker career. I am, uh, I'm disappointed for sure. Um, sometimes you cannot do anything. You play the best you could and the card don't go your way, don't go your way. I'm pretty happy of how I play and I would play the same if I had to play again. You had an amazing rail behind you, clearly. I mean, there's, they're up there, they're behind Ooh. us. They've been chanting and screaming. So uh, is there anything that you would like to say to them? Yeah, thank you very much. They are, uh, you guys are amazing, uh, having a fun time. And yeah, it's, it's been a good time. And we lose our French Canadian here from the final table. 
Another look at the wild turkey payouts. McLaughlin seemed destined for a better finish, but he winds up six with 1.6 million. Five players remain over 8.3 million waiting for the champ. So much money still at stake. The difference between fifth place and second is $3 million. Want to know more about your favorite players? Head to ESPN.com slash poker. Not only are the blinds so expensive, but they come around to each player quicker with each elimination. Folded to Amir Lehavat. He and Tran with only about 10 million each now. Folded to Tran with a seven on the button. JC with 12 big blinds left. All in. And he says all in for 9.9 .9 million. Farber in the small blind with King Queen. Call. And he call. makes the call. call. Savan so loosely in the big blind folds. So JC Tran at risk trying to find some hints of traction here. Farber needed only a little more than 10% of his huge stack to make that call. A seven, King Queen. Yeah, I got A7. Yeah. Shows the agent open, shut the button. What do you have? King Queen. No, A7. A7 took a big chunk of JC's chips earlier when he called McLaughlin's all in. Now A7 might take the rest of his chips away, but JC Tran nearly a 3-2 to two favorite here. Here's the flop and a king for Farber! And JC Tran two streets away from being knocked out. In the previous seven main event final tables, the chip leader finished worst in third just once. Philip Hill ninth in 2007. Five of diamonds. It all comes down to the river for the one-time chip leader of this final table. Yeah, JC came in as chip leader and favorite at the final table, but now he can only stand, watch, and hope for an ace on the river, or it's a disappointing early exit. The river card, the six of hearts, and JC Tran is gone in fifth place. Nothing went right for J.C. Tran on poker's biggest night. Good luck. Thank you. Over 2.1 million is what J.C. Oh, Tran nice. will take home. He's already got the respect of his fellow players, but he was hoping for so much more. And how about Farber clearing the 100 million chip mark with that knockout of the two-time bracelet winner. And a class act, J.C. Tran shown the exit, off to enjoy his family and his Sacramento Kings. The 2013 World Series of Poker is presented by Wild Turkey, bottled but never tamed. Please drink responsibly. And in part by the Caesars Casino Game on mobile and Facebook. What happens in Vegas can now go anywhere. Uh, no. <laughs> Congratulations to Scotty Wynn and Tom McAvoy, the newest members of the Poker Hall of Fame. Sylvain Luce Lee's all in with Queen 7. Ryan Reese with Ace 10 made the call looking for his third knockout. Luce Lee trying to become the first French main event champion. He's the third from France to make the final table. Marc Brochard was eighth in 1998. Antoine Saoud, third in 2009. Like J.C. Tran, Luce Lee has been handcuffed by the deck tonight. Here is the flop, nine, king, eight, neither pairs up. Reese's ace high still has the advantage. Luce Lee, like Ryan Reese and Jay Farber, playing in his first main event ever. He needs help in a hurry. The turn card. Another nine. Luce Lee needs to pair up on the river or be gone. The 23-year-old Reese looking for another knockout. The 26-year-old loosely looking for a six-outer. Only a queen or a seven saves his main event. Will we soon be three-handed? Loosely looking for a miracle. The river card loosely comes up empty, and his main event adventure comes to a close in fourth place. He always told himself he should play the main event at least one time. It looks like it was a pretty good idea for Sylvain Loosely. Sylvain Loosely earns a payday of nearly $2.8 million. Ryan Reese ups his second best stack to over $64 million, but that pales in comparison to the 105 million chips that Jay Farber has to work with. And that leaves Amir Lehavat, the only other player at the table, with just over $21 million. Indeed, the bracelet winner has an uphill climb here. Three-handed now. Loose Lee's cheering section begins to file out of the theater. Farber has the button for Trey. And he'll fold. Small blind Reese with pocket tens. Wait, ace king, and then on the very next hand, pocket tens? The, the man wearing Calvin Johnson's jersey is catching a lot of good cards. A raise of 2.6 million. Lehavut with two sevens. Leovut with just 21 big blinds left. This is blind versus blind. Bad luck. 
to have pocket sevens. All in. And a snap call from Reese as he appears headed for back-to-back -back knockouts on consecutive hands. Yeah, we are close to a Reese Farber heads up. We saw Amir Leva get unlucky and lose a big chunk with Ace King against McLaughlin's King Jack. The 38-year-old unlucky again here. We hold our heads up. It's recent Leia Butt heads up, but all three players are very invested in this moment. Amir looking to get lucky, but no immediate help in that flop. Deuce of diamonds on the turn brings Leia Butt to his do it or lose it moment. Leia Butt stoically awaits what could be his final card. He needs a seven. The river card, the Jack of Diamonds. Reese does it again, and we're heads up. Leavitt began with the second biggest stack. He survived long enough to earn third place and 3.7 million. Yeah, man, it was a pleasure. Yeah, same here. Good day. Both Reese and Farber have been runaway chip trains, both knocking out everyone else at this final table. Honestly, I don't want the fame, I don't want the prestige. I just, for myself, want to say that I'm world champion. If I win this thing, the first person I'm going to go to is going to be my father. To have my poster on in the Rio every time I walk in to play the main event for the rest of my life, that would be really awesome. If I were to win the tournament, the first person I'm going to go and see is definitely going to be my father. Final table. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the World Series of Poker main event final table telecast presented by Wild Turkey. The bubble is history, making the November 9 a thing of the past. Tonight, we crown a champion. Will it be amateur Jay Farber, the Las Vegas VIP host with the chip lead? Or can Ryan Reese, the youngest player to start the final table at 23, erase the chip deficit and leave $8.3 million richer? I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott as we bring you heads up action for the bracelet and the glory. This feels like a Midwest Southwest showdown. All of Michigan has made its way here to take on the strip savvy Las Vegas locals. Let's go now to Bruce Buffer, voice of the Octagon for the player introductions. Introducing first, a 23-year-old from Las Vegas by way of Lansing, Michigan, with approximately 85 million in chips. He is Reese the Beast, Ryan Reese. And his opponent, the man who was always the life of the party, with a shade over 105 million chips from Las Vegas, the Panda J. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. These final two preparing for the most life-changing hands of poker they'll ever play. So that's what $8 million looks like, huh? Reese majored in hospitality business at Michigan State, and Farber is in the hospitality business. Farber the chip leader in this one-on-one -on -one arena. It's often a battle of wits and wills, and heads up play. The button also is the small blind. X first before the flop and second post-flop. And in heads up, you will rarely see either player fold the button. Any pair is good, top pair is very good. Blinds right now, 500,000, 1 million, Andy of 150,000. King 10 for the former poker dealer, Ryan Reese. 
We started with 6,300 players. We end up with a 23-year-old in his first main event and an amateur heads up for the world title. Reese scored four knockouts of the November Niners, Newhouse, Bremelhouse, Loosley, and Lehavut. Reese raises to 2.6 million. Farber with ace eight. I think Farber is going to have a bigger adjustment to make heads up than Reese. Farber will need to open up and mix it up maybe more than he's used to. Farber brings three knockouts to this heads up battle, knocking out Benefield, McLaughlin, and JC Tran. And there is a re raise with the ace to four and a half million from Jay Farber. Setting the tone early and heads up is very important. Reese not going anywhere. Well, like our buddy Antonio Esfandiari always says, position is everything. Reese takes a flop in position. All right, and here is the flop. Queen, eight, king, top pair for Reese, bottom pair for Farber. This could be dangerous for the amateur. According to our heads up guidelines, Reese flopped a massive hand. And according to my math, Farber now just a 20% chance <laughs> to wind up with the best hand. You'll love to get any piece of the flop heads up. Farber with the smaller piece bets 3.4 million. And you can't blame him for betting. Flopping any pair heads up is a good hand. Ryan Reese, though, with top pair and the raise to a cool 9 million. And now Jay's thinking. Well, maybe you've got a pair that's better than my pair. And Farber does fold, and it's Reese drawing first blood in this final night of the main event. Tabitha Trask, Ryan's girlfriend, loves what she sees. And what she just saw is Ryan Reese quickly drawing almost even with Jay Farber. All right, let's take a look once again at the wild turkey payout. Seven places have already been paid at this final table. Over 13 million still needs a home. Jay Farber's live tournament earnings before this main event started were $2,155. 2,000 bucks! Now he's looking at 8 million. You look at that graphic, the counterpoint to that is that the chip leader, when heads up, began, has won five of the last six years, so I guess it's anybody's ball game. Farber, the older of the two players with the chip lead, he raised to two million with seven four of clubs. Reese with ace king. Reese saw Chris Moneymaker win it all on TV, then started playing poker as an eighth grader with friends in his basement. And Reese with a re-raise to five million. Well, ace king versus seven four seems like a huge mismatch, but Farber's in position and only a three to two underdog pre-flop. And as you talked about, you're not going to see a lot of buttons going away, and Farber does make the call for $3 million more. And also, he wants to set the tone that he will not be pushed around. Here's the flop. Ace, eight, four, same story. Both hit the flop, but Reese gets the best of it again. Yeah, top pair versus bottom pair again, and Farber's on the bottom again. Tough to climb to the top when you're on the bottom. $5 million from Ryan Reese with the pair of aces. Farber began playing poker as a teenager in a pool hall. Lon, the pool hall is like the opposite of the public library. Nobody's reading in a pool hall. <laughs> as we've mentioned, hitting the flop heads up is a good thing. Farber, though, has the smallest piece of it. He makes the call. Turn card now. Seven of diamonds, and the chip leader scores two pair on the turn to flip the tables on Reese. Reese checks this time. Bottom two pair is a whole lot better than bottom pair. My family's entire business for generations has been predicated on bottom two pair. I know I'm going to regret this. What's the family business? Uh, we import and export uh, bottom two pair for interested parties. <laughs> Farber with a bet of 8.2 million with his sevens and fours. Farber's got Reese on the hook now, because if I'm Ryan, I love top pair, top kicker with that board. Yep. Ryan's going to come along with a check call with his pair of aces as the pot climbs. So does the room's blood pressure. All right, the river card now is an ace. Oh, and Reese comes up big with trip aces. That changes everything. <laughs> wow. Reese definitely was going to lose a chunk of his chips on the river if an ace or king or eight doesn't hit. Figures the kid from outside Detroit would get bailed out. 15 million from Reese. That's a big number, but still less than half the pot. But the pot does swell. And Farber now, just with aces and sevens with an eight kicker, is pondering it. 
Barber gets away from his hand, and that sends Ryan Reese into the chip lead. The chant of Reese the Beast echoing through the Penn and Teller Theater. The river was kind to Ryan. Farber's left to talk it out with his rail. I saw a bottom pillow with like back door and everything. The 2013 World Series of Poker is presented by Wild Turkey, bottled but never tamed. Please drink responsibly. And in part by WSOP, Full House Pro on Xbox 360. Download poker's most authentic experience free on Xbox Live Arcade today. Up play was preceded by seven eliminations, the first of which was LA based pro Mark Newhouse. Former online star David Benefield started as the short stack and finished in eighth place, winning just under a million dollars. The Netherlands' Mikhail Bremelhaus ran his nines into Reese's aces to bust in seventh. Canada's Mark Etienne McLaughlin was the unluckiest to bust the final table. He also ran into aces, but McLaughlin did it with kings. J.C. Tran, the favorite coming in as the chip leader, could not get anything going. He bowed out in fifth for over two million. Morning. Francis Sylvain Luz Lee wasn't much of a factor in the final table, though he impressively finished fourth. On the very next hand, Amir Lehavat, the former Israeli junior chess champion, had his sevens taken down by Ryan Reese's tens to bust in third, leaving us heads up for the bracelet. And as you mentioned earlier, Alon, all the players busted by Reese or Farber. Our two remaining competitors match up well, both in their 20s, both relatively inexperienced, though Reese does have over 300K in career earnings. Yeah, Reese has a lot more tournament chops than Farber. He's been a World Series of Poker circuit grinder over the past couple of years. Back to action, Farber with the button raised to two million with ace seven of hearts. Reese looks down at king six off and calls for a million more. Reese, a Lions fan. Farber, a San Francisco 49ers fan. That certainly favors Farber. Indeed. All right, here is the flop. Nine, deuce, ten misses both. Farber's ace high is still the best hand. Reese checks. That flop creates no buzz in the Penn and Teller theater lot. In fact, if Penn and Teller were here, they would have left after seeing that flop. Farber continues with a bet of 2.2 million. Bet it and take it, I think. And Reese does fold, allowing Farber to drag that small pot. Well, Jay Farber trying to mount a comeback right now. Heads up has not been fun at all for Jay Farber thus far, but we know that his real job is fun 24-7. I definitely think that I'm a normal guy. I mean, I, I'm really fortunate to be where I'm at in every aspect of this. I don't take it for granted for one second. I've been in nightlife here for almost five years. Tonight, you're going to see one of the best parties imaginable. I mean, this is the number one club in Las Vegas. It's going to be just a crazy night. We used to joke that uh, I worked in nine to five. It was just the opposite nine to five. You know, we're typically getting ready to go to work eight, nine o'clock at night and out till four, five, six in the morning. Tonight, I've got a uh, bachelorette party from San Diego and take them out, make sure everybody has a good time and hopefully party with Tiesto a little bit. I have the easiest job ever. I get to party for a living. I take people out and make sure they have a good time. It's pretty awesome. I started as a promoter and I worked my way up to host and from there I've just kind of branched out and started working for myself. It's very competitive. Uh, you know, it takes a lot to get to the top and it takes a lot to stay on top. So right now we are inside the Ling Ling Lounge in Hakkasan, Las Vegas. 65,000 square feet, give or take. Tiesto's been the number one DJ in the world for, what, like 15 years now, if not more, you know? It's awesome. It's really fun to go watch him spin. Tonight's party is going to be the best party I've ever seen until, until tomorrow's party. Essentially, he gets bodies into nightclubs, though Jay does say, whatever you want in Las Vegas, you contact him, and it's just a phone call away. Sounds like he should be mayor. <laughs> All right. Back to action, Ryan Reese with the button and Queen 7. When you're in Waterford, Michigan, I don't think you call Ryan Reese to get whatever you want. Oh, well, maybe you do after this. Ah, good point. Reese with a raise to two and a half million. Farber with six high, six five offsuit. Farber got his first tattoo at age 17 on a trip to Las Vegas, a dragon tattoo on his upper left arm. And he calls for a million and a half. Here is the flop. Trey, Trey, seven. Reese catches his seven for two pair. A gut shot for Farber. Big flop for Ryan Reese. 
Farber checks. Ryan Reese looks at his bigger chip stack. Has some of the red chips worth half a million each. That's three million. Three million. Farber says getting a tattoo is a process. He picks out a design, and if he still wants it in six months, he gets it. I do the same with women. I'm thinking of marrying. <laughs> you don't take six months, do you? For the marriage, I mean. Good for you. <laughs> a call from Farber with just six high. I'm surprised Jay is playing here. Six high with a gut shot? Turn card, deuce of clubs. Yeah, that card doesn't change anything, anywhere, anytime. Farber checks again. And now Reese with his sevens and trays. And a big advantage. Now bets five million. Well, if I were Farber, I'd consider this hand like it were a tattoo. If he's still interested in it in six months, then put more chips into the pot. Wow, Farber, though, like a tattoo, is not going anywhere, it appears. And he with a check raise semi bluff to over 13 million. Boy, I didn't see that coming. Jay Farber busts out of his shell. Reese has the 91% next to his name. Farber, maybe like the Hulk, you get him angry, and then he starts to puff up and really play some poker. And here's a call from Reese. Yeah, Reese says, I don't think so. But if he really doesn't believe Farber, he might have repopped him there and maybe ended matters. All right. A very interesting river card to come. Nine of spades changes nothing. Reese's two pair is best. Is Jay done with a charade? Actually, it looks like he might have a second barrel of hooey he's willing to fire. Farber's trying to swaggle foos this pot away from Ryan Reese with six high. Look at this, Norman. The ink's not dry on this bluff. Farber bets 24 and a half million. 24 and a half million bluffing chips, Lon. And if Ryan Reese can smell out this bluff, he'll have a stranglehold on this heads up title match. Indeed, Farber has gone out on the edge of the cliff with this bluff. Big bet on the river. Reese probably hasn't seen Farber do that without a monster hand. Really, Jay? It's a big bet. Reese left to wonder, does Farber really have a better hand? Wow. Over half of Farber's stack in the middle to have this strategy blow up would be devastating to him. The power of aggression, though, Lonnie. You make the other guy squirm. You make the other guy make a tough decision. Ryan Reese cannot find it within himself to call, and Farber gets away with it. Heck of a play from Jay Farber, and he's back in business. And back in the chip lead with almost a hundred million. And now the chance of old Jay take over the theater. And we have ourselves a horse race once again. Farber grew up in the moneymaker era, and while that may not be the bluff of the century, it was pretty close. Listen, Jay. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Come on. Chris is all in. Chris Moneymaker going all in with nothing. A stunning play from Moneymaker, who missed his draws, has nothing, and now has put Sam Farhall all in. He is not going to do it. Chris Moneymaker bluffs Sam Farhall out of a big stack of money. And considering this situation, I know we're early in the century, but that's the bluff of the century. Hard to believe it was 10 years ago. It remains to be seen if the Farber effect gets its start tonight. I still say we just flip for it. Got the same sack now. 
You know, that oh. was Chris Moneymaker's first live poker tournament ever, and it set off the poker boom. It's appropriate on the 10-year anniversary of Moneymaker's seminal title. We have two more unlikely 20-somethings trying to become a world champion. Farber with a raise to two million with King Six, and Reese with six high this time. And he will come along for a million more. The flop, Jack, Jack, Trey. Farber's advantage is intact. Reese checks. Jay with his king high, bets 2.2 million. Reese with squad douche. But maybe he can make 6-5 work like Jay Farber did. He does make the call and gets a stare from Jay Farber. Turn card, pairs the board again. Farber's king is the tipping card in his favor. Well, the tray really changes nothing. Let's just move on to the river. <laughs> Check again from Reese. Farber wants to keep the pressure on. This time, 3,350,000. And Ryan Reese is going to stick around with the call. It comes along, and I don't think Ryan Reese is looking to go to showdown. I think he has other plans in mind. River card, 10 of hearts. That leaves Reese playing the board. Usually not a good thing, but he quickly reaches for his stack. Yeah, does this look familiar? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Although I don't think either guy is a goose or a gander. Six million from Ryan Reese. Will this bluff work? Not a huge bet, but it does throw a shadow of doubt upon Jay Farber. And he gives up the better hand and the chip lead. Every time I bet the river in that spot, I get raised. But it's good to be Ryan Reese. So Reese with a great river bet on this big stage. He's a far cry from his hometown in Michigan. Most people don't know much about me. I'm more than OK with that. We're in Waterford, Michigan right now, and this is where Ryan grew up. It's a special place for him. You know, he went to the same high school that his dad went to, so that's always been, you know, a special thing for him. Well, here is Our Lady of the Lakes, where I went to high school. It's a Catholic school. Her sister Fran, she actually liked me a lot. I played poker here in homeroom every day. From here, I went to Card Sharks down the street, which is a charity poker room, and I dealt there and played there at the same time. Half of the money they make goes to charity, the other half goes to the people who own it. What's up, Johnny? I asked him, I was like, hey, what do you want to do with your life? And he said, I want to be a professional poker player. First time I ever played cash games was here. Our biggest goal is not only to achieve success for ourselves, but to show people that if you believe in it, you visualize it, it'll happen. He's always been pretty confident. He's, uh, he sets his mind to, to something and, and that's what he does. He said, I'm going to graduate first, and then I'm just going to travel the world and you know, just, just enjoy it. And maybe I'll, I can make some money along the way. I'm 23 years old, and it's the first main event I played. Let's go, baby. My son, who I love dearly, and who is such an awesome guy. Reese the Beast! <laughs> Ryan's often said his goal in life was to be a millionaire by 25. Well, he's ahead of schedule by two years, but until recently, he was pretty much always broke, like you, Lon, until you were 45. <laughs> With the button, Farber made a men raise to two million. Reese picked up two jacks. Two big hands, heads up, pocket jacks, which even heads up is usually a loser, and Farber with an ace. A re-raise from Ryan Reese to five million. Farber's gotta like his ace, like having position. But he has got his hands full with Ryan Reese, heads up. And a four bet for Farber here to 8.8 .8 million. And Ryan Reese is not going anywhere. Four bet normally a very strong play, heads up. But Farber has run into a bigger hand here, the pocket jacks. Ryan Reese. Content just to make the call here. Almost 18 million in the middle. Here is the flop. 4-8 Trey. Farber picks up middle pair. 
Reese loves the look of that flop. No ace, no king, no queen. All cards likely in Farber's range. Reese checks the pocket jacks. And if I'm Farber, I think I'm best right here, flopping middle pair. Farber with 6.7 million. With $2,000 to his name a year ago, Reese bought into the World Series circuit event in Hammond for $1,675. That's going all in, my friends. He finished second and won a quarter million dollars. And been on a tear since. And there is another call from Ryan Reese of 6.7 million. 31 million in the pot. Ryan Reese's parents, Frank and Cheryl, they see the deuce of hearts on the turn. Their son, Ryan Reese, still best. He checks again. I think Reese firmly believes his jacks are good, but he's content to let Farber bet into the pot. Farber added a wheel draw there. And it looks like he wants to keep firing. Why not? This time, Farber slides forward 13.6 million. I like the way Reese is playing this hand, getting a bunch of value for his pocket jacks. He's turning the Lon McCarran Memorial hand into a pot of gold. <laughs> Again, Reese just with the call. And 58 million in the pot. That's 30% of the chips on the table. A key hand and a huge pot. River card, seven of spades. Farber misses. And that's one of the safest boards ever. Heads up for pocket jacks. Reese checked a third time. Yes. Farber Let's checks, go. and Reese will take it. Yeah, Reese knew his hand was good, and he is embracing the moment. A huge pot for young Ryan Reese. A fist pump from a proud father. Ryan soaks in the love and stacks up the winnings. With two-thirds of the chips in play, Ryan Reese making a strong push for the title. We'll find out if Reese's piece of history awaits. Back inside the Penn & Teller Theater at the Rio for the World Series of Poker Main Event Final Table Telecast presented by Wild Turkey. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. Jay Farber heading towards the danger zone, lacking momentum and starting to lack chips. Farber with a raise to two million with pocket fives. Reese with ace jack. This is gonna be the sixth straight year. A 20-something has won the main event. Peter Reesgate, Joe Cata, Jonathan Duhamel, P.S. Hines, Greg Merson, and now Reese or Farber. Reese with a re-raise to five million. Farber started the final table with the fourth biggest stack. Reese, the fifth biggest stack. Now heads up for the title. $13 million still to be divvied up. And now Farber getting serious, a four bet to nine and a half million. Farber getting feisty. I think Reese might be getting to him. Jay is frustrated. Ryan Reese brimming with confidence, overflowing with chips. And that's another raise, a five bet to 17 and a half million. Farber actually acquainted with the original 20-something who won the main event in 1978, fellow Las Vegas resident Bobby Baldwin. Farber forced a fold to Reese's huge raise. Ryan Reese putting on a clinic of power poker heads up. Shortly after he made the November 9, we asked Ryan about his chances here. His response was as candid as they come. I guarantee I'm going to win the main event because I'm better than everybody else at the final table. Well, Calvin Johnson's got a little Joe Namath in him. Reese the Beast one knockout away from delivering on that guarantee. Reese sitting with over 172 million chips. Looks down at King 10. And remarkably, he was down to 10 big blinds on day 7. Raised to 2 million. He was all in with those 10 big blinds also. Farber with Jack 10 comes along. The flop, King 5, Queen. Again, top pair for Reese as Farber flops an open ender. Farber checked. Both these guys have shown a lot of resilience to get here. Reese with his pair of kings bets two and a half million. Oh. And oh. Farber's oh. all in and gets a quick call from Reese. Yes. This Let's could go. be it. Let's go. Up down to 16 big blinds. Farber decides to go with the draw. We'll make a straight and we'll go from there. Okay? I mean, I'm happy with the way I played. Hey, I don't care. Make a straight and we'll go from there. And now Ryan Reese on the brink of making his guarantee good. Ryan Reese, two streets away from a huge payday in the main event champion bracelet. Turn card is a nine, and Farber gets there with the straight, and he will survive. 
He does survive. If a jack does come on the river, they would have the same king high straight and chop the pot. The river card is paint, but it's a queen, and Farber can scoop the pot to the tune of almost 37 million chips, and he's still in the game. I gotta make a hand once tonight. Jay Farber with renewed life at this final table, but does he have the right mindset to proceed and win it all? Reese still in control. Just before the break, Jay Farber doubled up with a turn straight, and he earns tonight's never came oh. moment. All in and facing elimination, Farber escaped on the turn to keep his bracelet hopes alive. Nothing extraordinary with this replay. Dealer of the year, Belvy Dalton delivered a clean turn card. It was a nine to keep Jay Farber around. But this replay is worth it for the panda celebration alone. There it is. <laughs> I've always been a sucker for a good panda dance line. Action underway. Farber raised pre-flop. Reese called the flop, gave Farber a flush draw. Reese, queen high, though, is best right now. Farber has the action after Reese checked. Jay Farber betting 2.8 million. Farber bets the flush draw, and I would think that's the end of the hand. Why do I ever think? <laughs> well, Reese has chips to play with. A lead of over 100 million on his counterpart, and there's the call. Turn card. Jay Farber looking for something good to happen. Heads up, and he does pair up to grab a healthy advantage. Reese with a gut shot. Reese checks again. According to a Harris survey I saw, 14% of adults in the U.S. have a tattoo. I assume we bring the national average down, Lon, you and me. Am I correct? Yeah, that's not wamboozled on my lower back that you see there. Oh. Check from Reese. Brings a bet of $6 million from Farber. Reese picked up a gut shot, but again, I would think that bet could end matters. I'm clearly better off not thinking. <laughs> it's not over until Reese the Beast says it's over. And another check call. But Ryan thinks he could still hit a queen or a jack or, or hit his gut shot. River card. Another tray. The club giving Farber a flush on the paired board. Reese checks a third time. And this is the easiest street of the hand for Farber to wager. He'll bet his flush with confidence. Jay Farber wondering how much can he get out of Ryan Reese. He thinks 13 million is the number. Yeah, he's trying to extract some value out of that flush, but there's not much value to be made. Reese has nothing. Reese with a tricky decision, though. Does he think Farber is capable of a bluff here? Wow. Reese has nothing, but he's thinking something. And I'm sure he's thinking back to Farber's six-high bluff, which he knows about by now. Reese is thinking about a call here. Ryan probably thinks Farber would have checked back an ace high. Farber awaiting the verdict. Reese makes the call, maybe just to keep Jay honest. Jay shows the flush. Ouch. The hero call by Reese gives Farber some new life. Or Max Steinberg and Alex Powers on Reese's rail clean hot. <laughs> Whatever the read or reason, Ryan Reese can't put this one in the books yet. Farber with a healthier stack now. Well, if Reese loses this thing, that hand will haunt him even more than Farber's six high bluff. Jay Farber got called with queen high. Yes, queen high. The amateur on the march once again. Money is the driver, but the bracelet is nice too. Retail value half a million, poker cred value immeasurable. Reese holds a better than two to one chip advantage on Farber right now. Farber on the uptick recently. Jack 10 from the button for Farber. 
A raise to two and a half million. Farber's played a lot of cash poker, but he is an amateur. The first amateur to win the main event was Hal Fowler in 1979. He beat Bobby Hoff, heads up in what sometimes is referred to as the greatest upset in main event history. With ace eight off, Reese makes the call. Farber says he prefers cash games. Reese says he's just a tournament guy. The flop eight, six. Jack Farber, the one flopping top pair this time. Reese with middle pair. Now finally, Farber flops top pair. The tide might be turning. Reese checked it. Farber with three million into the middle. Reese trying to give the state of Michigan its second main event champion in the last five years. Joe Cata, of course, winning it in 2009. 83 world champion, recent Hall of Fame inductee Tom McAvoy, also from Michigan. Reese will come along for three million. We're overdoing Maryland to win another main event. <laughs> Turn card is the ace, and Reese's run good is clicking on all cylinders, turning aces up. He checks again. I don't understand much about Tide's line, but apparently they can change patterns even without the moon and the sun being involved. <laughs> Farber, just with the pair of jacks, reaching 5.6 million. I'm not sure about that bet. I guess Farber figures jacks are still best and he wants to make Reese pay for any draw he might have. You can't shrink away from every ace. But this is bad timing for Farber as Reese check raises to 13 million. That's a nice check raise. And overall at this final table, Reese has run better and played better. And I'm including Farber's fabulous six high bluff and Reese's awful queen high call. Ben Lamb, one of Farber's coaches, finished third at the main event two years ago. Aces and eights for Reese, but it's Farber who's the dead man in this pot, and Reese takes another one. Reese looking good, and Farber is teetering again. And by the way, my favorite main event final table before Chris Moneymaker was in 1988. The final hand immortalized in rounders. I always liked what Eric Seidel said to Chris Marlowe after losing to Johnny Chan heads up, quote, he outplayed me, end quote. Oh, you're there, man. Ryan Reese. On the verge of a world championship. Looks down at 10-5 with the button. You saw the face of Jay Farber. It just did not look like the face of a champion right now. Downtrodden, short on chips. Reese raises to two and a half million. Five tray of hearts for Farber. Worm had the ace of spades tattooed to his wrist in rounders. I think that's the one tattoo Jay Farber doesn't have. <laughs> Always had an ace up his sleeve. Farber comes along. Here is the flop. Ace, ace, eight. That flop does not connect with either hand line. Even I can see that from all the way over here. <laughs> Farber checks his five high. And now Reese with 10 high. That's three million. Farber looking at his stack, and that usually means he's going to reach for his chips. Wow, that's not just a call, Norman. That's a strong check raise to seven and a half million. Well, these are the kinds of hands that can make or break you in heads up. You completely whiff on the flop. The board is scary, and there's something in the pot worth winning. Here is where your long-term read on the man across the table comes into play. Ryan Reese not shrinking away. He makes the call for four and a half million more. Yeah, Reese calling a check raise there with 10 high. He's a beast. Turn card, another eight, two pair on board. Reese's 10 makes his hand the best. A check from Farber. He doesn't follow up on his check raise. Reese follows up though. That's a stack of reds worth 10 million. Yeah, Reese called the check raise, and now he challenges Farber to check raise him again. And Farber shrinks away. He has had all he can handle of Ryan Reese. And the 23-year-old Michigan native doing his best to bring momentum back to his corner. Ryan Reese closing in on backing up his guarantee. The 2013 World Series of Poker presented by Wild Turkey, bottled but never tamed. Please drink responsibly. And in part by the Caesars Casino Game on mobile and Facebook. What happens in Vegas now can go anywhere.
Ryan Reese has opened up a better than 6-1 to chip advantage over Jay Farber. Farber making a comeback at one point, but that was short-lived. Reese once again outflopped Farber, catching middle pair to Farber's bottom pair. Both check the flop. Turn card now is another nine, and with trips, Reese has Farber drawing dead. Boy, Reese keeps out flopping Farber, and the turn makes it worse. Farber checks again. Reese will bet his trip nines three million. Reese has had almost all the answers and the cards all night long. The Detroit Lions should play this tape before every game. <laughs> Farber drawing dead, puts three million into the pot. Calling the turn, drawing dead lot, his night in a nutshell. River card now. Ace of clubs. Farber checks a third time. Reese with hammerlock on this hand, bets eight million. Farber's dilemma, he's down to 21 million. If he folds here, he's left with 17 big blinds. If he calls, he'll have 10 big blinds. Call. He does make the call, and Farber has his stack cut again. Reese just bleeding Farber to death. Often getting a piece of the board, heads up will earn you chips, but not for Jay Farber, not on this night against Ryan Reese. The 23-year-old closing in on the world title. How far and fast he has come is remarkable. Farber has shown flashes of strength and savvy tonight, but not enough to keep up with the 23-year-old. Ryan's best friend, Dylan Armstrong, came up with the Reese the Beast name. Sounds like it's sticking. The Beast with a monster chip lead, a 12 to 1 advantage on Farber. Reese looks down at two more pretty cards, Ace King of Hearts. A raise to two and a half million. Jay Farber, Queen Five of Spades. All in. All in. Cool. He says all in, and Reese makes the call. Reese with the Ace upper King hand again. We have Ace King. Ace King versus Queen Five. Ryan Reese riding the wave of great cards. Jay Farber can't get out of his way. I mean, like, I don't think I played that at all. Uh, Do I hit the five or the queen? I want to hit the five. I Pro care. Chance Corneth with a desperation pep talk for Farber. He's hit everything. Jay. He's running like God. Jay, Jay. Jay, he's ran like God. I know. If you win this hand, it doesn't matter. So you just keep it up. Well, I mean, whatever. So, five's my favorite card in the deck, so I'm going to serve with the five of hearts. Whatever. And the five of diamonds. I don't actually care. <laughs> Ryan Reese on the verge of $8.3 million. With that hand with a nine, I had a pair, but like he... Yeah. All right, the flop for Jack-10. Reese with a Broadway draw, stealing Farber's queen. Yeah, that flop cuts Farber's outs in half. A queen now would give Ryan Reese an ace high straight. As you mentioned, Reese all in on day seven for just 10 big blinds. But now, so close to winning it all. A tray on the turn. No help for Farber. Let's go. Farber deflated and about to be defeated. So much respect I'm Tears already in the eyes of Ryan Reese with one card to come. Ryan Reese needs to dodge a five on the river, and the main event championship will be his. The river card is a four! Yes! Ryan Reese is the world champion! Ryan Reese said he was the best player in here, and he said he would win. By golly, he did. The Beast is best. You're the best, baby. Let's go. Let's play with you, son. I wish I could run like you, buddy. Well played. Let's play with you, buddy. An amazing main event performance by Jay Farber. He's right now looking for his dad, and there's Frank. Ryan Reese announced to the world that he would win this title, and he has turned doubters into believers. 
for Jay Farber, a payday of almost $5.2 million. You played great. He ran amazing. What are you going to do? He made every hand. Like, every single hand. He had the best hand every time. I know. I know he did. He's so used to having the best hand, he called you a so the wild turkey payouts are now official. Ryan Reese will collect over $8.3 million while Jay Farber gets a pretty impressive consolation prize. Let's go down to Kara Scott right now for the interviews and the main event bracelet presentation. And now it's time for the bracelet presentation, but first, it's $5 million to our second place finisher, Jay Farber. It was a hard fought battle. You came in as the amateur at the table, but certainly didn't play like one. Can you talk to us about this ride here for the heads up? Uh, it was an, it's been an incredible experience. Uh, it, not, nothing but the most fun. I, I had a great time this whole time. Uh, unfortunately, I just couldn't get any cards today, and you know, he, he made a bunch of hands and played better than me. So congratulations, Ryan's a great player. Happy for him to win. And now it is time for the bracelet presentation, and I'm going to throw this over to Jason Arashabin, who designed this beautiful bracelet. It is our honor here at Jason of Beverly Hills to present the 2013 World Series of Poker Championship Bracelet. Greg, will you do the honors? Ryan, from your face, it looks like this is an emotional moment for you. Can you let us in on, on how this feels for you? It feels amazing. First, I want to thank God. Without God, I wouldn't be able to be here. I want to thank my family, my friends, for the best rail in the entire world. And everybody who's been supporting me, and a big hats off to Jay. He, he played for good. He was a tough competitor. All the way, you've had this incredible certainty that you were going to win this. What gave that to you? I just think I'm the best player in the world. It's an amazing thing. Ten years on from the time you watched Chris Moneymaker raise this bracelet, you're raising it again. This is our new world champion. Raise that bracelet, Ryan. Congratulations. It was clear during this main event that the one thing Ryan Reese did not lack was confidence. I just think I'm the best player in the world. Now he has the cash and the bracelet to back that up. Reese had Farber on the ropes once, but when Farber bounced back, Reese quickly closed him out. 23-year-old Ryan Reese, the 2013 World Series of Poker main event champion. For Norman Chad and Kara Scott, I'm Juan McCarran. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Another incredible World Series of Poker season is in the books.